get the point. Okay. Um, somebody come to talk to you. All right. Somebody come to propose you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then after sometimes you had a dream, think that this person is not the right person to you. Okay. After sometimes somebody has come and tell you the way you say prophetic message. Yes. Saying that this is the right person. But for you, you had a vision that this is not the right person. You saw that person doing a wedding with somebody else. So how do you deal with that issue if it happened to be? To okay, your, your now I get it. Uh, <laughs> so now the question is, uh, from, the, from the four, okay, from the four ways, maybe you have visited, you have, you have an opportunity to have two, right? But one from someone and one from yourself, right? So someone says, I had a vision, or maybe I had a dream that this is a person who's going to marry you. And you know for sure this person is into another relationship. It's not, or you don't know. It's not in another relationship. Okay, but you had a vision that this person is coming to you, and he wants he want to have a relationship with you, right? Okay. Uh, and then someone else comes and gives you a prophetic message. Is that right? Okay. You just come to visit. Yeah, okay. Okay, he's still waiting. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. You now get it? I see, I get it. Yeah. I get it. So now do we now all understand it, right? Yeah. Like okay, that. so somebody comes to propose you and then you say, okay, because not every, I don't think, not, I, can't say, I cannot say not every, but I think every woman, there's no woman you propose now and just say, okay, I, I, or you're welcome. They always give you time, I'll think about it, I'll pray about it, right? And while you're in that period of waiting and waiting and maybe waiting upon the Lord, and you have a dream or maybe a vision that this person is marrying someone else in the dream or in the vision, Right? And then someone else comes again and gives you a vision, uh, maybe a prophetic word, to say, this is your man. Are we there? Okay, now I get it. So now, do you understand? There's two things you need to understand today. We have to be very careful with dreams and visions. That's the first thing you need to understand. Uh, what I've learned for the past few years in my, 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 my journey with the Lord there are times where God will show you something, but what he's showing you, it might be contrary from what you understand. I've seen that so many times. It's like somebody, sometimes you can see a dream, and you see somebody, maybe is dead, and you think, according to you, you think this person is dying, but the message can be contrary from that. So that's where the problem is. So you need to, the only thing is that when God gives you a vision, it doesn't mean he will at least already confirm it. So when you read the book of Job, chapter 33, verse number 14 to 15, my understanding of that scripture, when you read it, when God speaks, he speaks twice. Are we together? When you read that scripture, Job 33, 14 to 15, when God speaks, he will speak and speak again. So you need now to be more Prayerful. This is the time where you need more prayer. Go to confirm whether it is real that is someone else or there is just something God wants to confirm. Because what I've learned myself, that's my personal experience with the Lord, is that when God speaks something, He will always bring it back. But when the devil, because the devil can also speak through dreams and vision, remember that. All together? So, Devil can bring dreams and visions because the Bible says he turned himself into the angel of light. But the difference between the dreams and the vision that come from the devil and from God is that God will speak and will speak again and confirm. But the devil, he speaks only once. He does not speak twice. You know why? Because he's a liar and he can never remember what he said yesterday. Do you hear that? So when the devil tells you something today, even if you say, oh God, I'm still praying and asking, he will never come back again because why? he will not remember what he said yesterday. 
Every liar will never remember what he said yesterday. And that's how you know people are liars, right? So every liar can never remember what they said yesterday. So if you want to see someone who don't know somebody's a liar or is a liar or is lying, ask them what they told you sometimes back. They will, they will be confused because it's not true. But God will speak and will speak again because God will never change his mind. And God is not forgetful. He will never forget what he said even one or two years ago. Do you hear that? So, your question, number one, when you hear that kind of dreams comes or vision, remain prayerful. So, don't take both serious at the same time because it, it may confuse you already. You see somebody getting married and then suddenly someone say, this is your man. You hear that? You get confused. So, what to clarify the confusion? It is God himself. If you take time in prayer and ask God, God will reveal himself. Yes. Satisfied? God bless you. Okay. Who's next? Mr. Gloria, welcome. Uh, my, you said out of the four, we can only have one. You can sometimes get only one time. Sometimes one, sometimes all, sometimes two, sometimes three, depends. Yeah. So, like, let's say you, you have the godly desire and the passion. Mm -hmm. How will you distinguish that from lust? Because you can, let's say, get attracted to somebody or you have that strong desire and you think it's a desire, but maybe it's lust. Okay. How will you distinguish that from lust? Okay. So the sister is asking, how do you distinguish the godly desire and passion and lust, right? So when I, when I explained that in the beginning, I said, lust is, is always more about what our eyes see. Are we there? It's more about the physical attractions, not what comes from the heart. So what you see is just the outside and you, you are attracted by that. Do you hear that? You are attracted by the outside. So your all, your all desire, remember there's a desire, there's a godly desire, and there's desire still there. It may not be godly, but it's there. So, and there is something that will attract you from the outside. For example, you see a lady and you find she has a beautiful body. Some people call it a Coca-Cola body or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you feel like, oh my God, if I can have this kind of... You see? Oh, this one, if I can have this. You start seeing the bed, you start seeing the dreams and visions. So this is all, that's what we call last. You are attracted by something which is more physical. But the inside there is nothing. So the godly desire and passion, it does not just come from the outside. It comes from the inside. But it has nothing to do with the physical appearance. Because the last comes from the physical, from the outside. Are we there? But the godly desire and passions come from the inside. I can give you an example when I met my wife for the very first time. I met her in the church. Hallelujah. Let me tell you that. Hallelujah. My wife, how I met her, when we met, I was already a pastor for two years. You hear that? And you can imagine being a single pastor. I had ladies come. I think our church by that time was over 100 people. 200 almost. I was there. And I had young ladies come into my house every morning, wash clothes, prepare the bed from the church. Papa is bed. Papa is house. Papa is what? Everything is done in the name of Papa. Do you hear that? So... This one come, the other one come, the other one come. But let me tell you the truth. Not all were really coming because they want to papa me. But most of them, they were because they were looking for something. Everybody want to marry a, 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 a man of God, right? But they, they know that when you marry a man of God, you never divorce, you never have problems. You know all the things that I'm talking about the truth, right? Everybody want to marry a man of God. Ooh, the true man of God, not these crooks and all that. So, well, you know that when I marry this person, at least my life is secured because you know they will never go outside. They will never cheat and all that kind of thing. So, there were so many, Papa, Papa, tomorrow I'm coming to your house to wash your clothes. I said, no, welcome. So, my house, every morning, you find different ladies coming. But let me tell you the truth. People were like, is this man crazy? I had no passion for anybody. I had no desire for anyone. I was just looking at them as my own daughters. 
Hallelujah. And then, you know, I met my wife. She came to our church. She came to our church once. Huh? She came to our church once. And that was the very first time she came to attend our church. And right from the inside, I felt, boom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. You feel that, you see that desire and passion. Not because of what I saw outside. Hallelujah. But because of what I felt inside. So, it was that, I, from there, from the very, if she was, where is she? If she was here, I should have told you. I've never, I've never really proposed, like, you know, people will go and stories, you see, you see, no. The first time I, I went to her, I told her, I want to marry you. You're my wife, that's it. Yes. And that was, I think, maybe weeks after she visited the church. Not even a month or years, weeks after she visited the church. So when, when I, what I saw, I, I believed that this is the wife, this is the woman I want to have in my life. Even though I didn't know her, I didn't know her background or anything. I just believed this is the wife I want to have. That's it. You hear that? So I didn't see anything outside like some people, oh, she looks, oh, let me see this side, let me look at what. No, I didn't see all that. So when I went now, when we started our relationship, it brought a lot of issues in the church. Now, that's where you know the papa, papa, papa now started falling apart. But they were like, this woman, she just came. You see that? She just came and she, we were all here and all that. I didn't have any desire in my heart. I didn't have any passion for anyone. I can't just force myself. And then the second thing, so there was a vision. We started praying over it and then God showed the vision. And the, the, the connection was already there because she was coming from another country and we just met. And she was on her way, in fact. She was not even coming to live there. This is how connection is. Go bring from one from somewhere. You come from something else and then you're just, you're just caught. You're just passing by. They, uh, she was with the sister who lives in the UK. So they were on their way to South Africa so that they can go to UK. She's in the UK, the sister. She lives in the UK, the, the elder, I mean, one of the elder sister. They were just passing. We just met today. They came to church and then she was caught today. But yeah, so and then from there, relationship started because I knew they won't take long there. So everything was just fast, 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 fast. And then the sister said, no, we didn't come for this. And let me tell you the truth. When the, when, the, when the sister left, they were not even talking to each other because the sister said, what's going wrong with you? We're just passing by. We didn't come to marry here. Do you hear that? Even though she took the money for the, for the dowry and nobola, but she didn't want the sister to stay. Why? Because according to her, it was not their plan. But it was a divine connection to me because she just brought her for me. Yeah, that's the only God. God will use, God will use someone. This is what I'm talking about, divine connections. God will bring someone from somewhere and then from, from somewhere and all that. So their, their journey was to South Africa, we met in Namibia, to South Africa, then they go to London. Are we there? But you see how God does things? We ended up staying in South Africa and in Namibia. The sister right now, she's in London and we're in America today. This is what I'm talking about, divine connection. So God can use one of the four to speak to you just for you to be able to listen and to open your ears so that God can connect you to the right thing and the right person. Am I answering? Okay, who's next? The brother over there in the back. Oh, this, okay, sister, here, yeah, then the brother there. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, my next question is, so uh, among those four of them, let me say, for example, God speak through the prophetic word. Mm. And maybe he only spoke to a male or maybe a female, just, God. you know, or maybe somebody else. And yeah. then when it comes to, um, to you personally, the person in question, you don't like see yourself with, you know, mm. with the person that God has sp spoken to. So what do you do? Like, do you just go into marriage because God has spoken or there is something that you have, or you actually have to see in the man for you to go forward 
in marriage. Okay. That's what my question is. Okay. The question yeah. of the sister among the four, uh, she just speak the prophetic. Maybe a pastor come and say, this is what I believe God is putting in my heart, that this is your husband to be, or maybe this is your wife to be. And yet you yourself, you don't feel it, right? So what will happen? Will you just go ahead and marry because the pastor have said or because the prophet have said or what will happen to you? Hallelujah. So in that question, what I will say, that's, I'll come back to that again. Uh, it, whether it's from vision, prophetic and all that, we need always to take time to ask God to confirm it. So God should give you a sign. Are we together? So a sign must be there at all time. But at the same time, I want you to remember this. So, when, when it comes to the matter of love, there are certain things you don't feel. It's not about feelings. It's, you don't feel it sometimes until it begins to grow in you. Are they? Yes. Most people that I know God directed them to women or men to marry, most of them who really, who are very attentive to listen to God, most of them, they will tell you they never felt it. They never had that in their mind. You know? But God just brought it through maybe one of the ways. And suddenly you feel, even, it may be not very prophetic. It can also be through a vision. You have a vision about someone, but yet you don't feel it. You don't feel like, no, 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 this is not the kind of man I want. Have you ever that? Yes. Sometimes God can reveal to you, not even through prophetic or through your pastor or anyone. There are times where you can just have a vision yourself. You yourself, you have a vision, a dream. This is what God is bringing you and God is speaking the first time and speaking the same time. And yet inside of you, you feel like, no, 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 this one. Because most of us, the only thing we have is that we are living, but we always have things of ourselves, which are always different from what God has in mind. And that's why we have to be very, very careful. I want this kind of man. Uh, there's a sister we had uh, in Africa. Where, where I come from there. I don't want to mention the country. Where I come from there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this sister, she was well up. She, was, she had a very good position. And we used to fellowship together in the church. But she had her own criteria of a kind of a man that will ever marry her. This man must be this way. Must have this kind of lifestyle must have at least a salary from this amount to this amount a month. She should have this kind of, he should have this kind of car and this kind of house. It's not bad. Are we there? But she stick on those. For her, she just stick on those. And years were going, years were going, years were going. And everybody will come and propose her. She looks, she start looking at her list. She start looking at her list. No, no, no. This one is not there yet. This one is not there yet. This one is not there yet. And she kept rejecting and rejecting and rejecting everybody. I remember there's a brother. There's a brother who even came to me and said, Pastor, I may want this sister. I want to marry her. I really love this sister. I want to marry her. I'm ready even tomorrow if she wants that we can go ahead. And then we said, okay. The first step, go to her and speak to her and propose her. Although we know she had a list, but just go. And she went, the guy went there and proposed the sister. I think my wife should remember this. So the, the guy proposed the sister. And according to what I heard, I was not there. But the way this lady treated this guy, I think the treatment was more worse than a dog. And I, in fact, I think she even called, she even called her, according to what I heard, I wasn't there present. According to what I heard from the other fellow, uh, you know, people in the church, they say that she called her uh, something like marrying, marrying him is like marrying a dog or something. Do you hear that? But the brother believed that this is the wife that God has given to him. So to make the story short, today, their husband and wife. So years were going, nobody was coming. Nobody came with the, with the that's she wanted. Nobody came with that kind of uh, a car she wanted. Nobody came with the kind of a house she wanted. And now this guy never never drove before. Never had a, even a bicycle. The guy never had even a good education background. The guy never had even a saving. The guy never had 
nothing and nothing and nothing. Yeah? And they live in the, in the woman's house. You see? It is not about the feeling. So sometimes things work that way. The people you think, they may not be the person God brings into your life. It's just for you to humble yourself. And if it is God speaking, God will make them the kind of person or people you want into your life. Hallelujah. Because it is God that builds up people. It is God that makes people be what they are. It's just for you to understand and to take that. Did I answer? <laughs> All right. Time is going. So, brother over there, you have a question? Shalom. Hi. Um, my question is not a question. You said something like there is no perfect marriage. Can you go in deep, please? Okay. When I say there's no perfect marriage, is that you, sh- you should never expect perfection in any marriage. Well, sometimes people feel like when you get married, maybe because you see a sisters are wonderful here, singers. Let's pray they are good prayer, you know? And you compare with those who are in the world, for example, and you feel like instead of marrying the ones in the world, I better marry the sister in the church because when I marry the sister in the church, the marriage is perfect. You hear that? No. So, you need to come to that level of understanding. When it comes to no perfect marriage simply means every marriage has issues. Where there's issues, there's no perfection. There are mistakes in every marriage. There are issues. But it's just that we children of God, we have our own way of handling our marriages. But almost every marriage faces the same things. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the angry appeal mm. ni umesema eti ah ni swali ambayo nataka niulize kwa zile njia ine ya wapi nzuri mwa zile zote your brother is asking what is the from the four ways god show you who to marry we talk about the vision right number one. we talked about what strong godly desire and passion and we talk about prophetic message and we talk about divine connection right now according to him is asking uh, which one is the best way so i don't know what answer will i give i think all of them they are the best depending on which one god decide to use because it's not you who tell god okay use this way it is god who decide which way to show you who to marry he might use the vision he might use the strong uh, godly desire or passion he might use a prophetic message he might use a divine connection. It's up to you if you believe in all four and you can take it if God speaks. Yeah. So there's no right one or wrong. Whatever God decides to use, that's what we take. Thank you. Uh, here, Mama, uh, Mama Rebecca here. And then we'll go to the brother over there. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I don't have a question, but I want to add something. Um, according to what pastor says, uh, when we go up, we have our own vision, we have our own character, we have our own education, we have our own way to see things. Uh, I want to talk about myself for a few minutes. Uh, when I was growing up, I was too proud for myself. So I was saying that I, the man have to marry me, have to be like uh, I have to have a master degree. Mm. You have to have uh, money. You have to have. A, uh, I need a tall man. I don't want a short man like short me. Like you. So like me. <laughs> so I always say to my 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 father, my stepfather. So my stepfather was telling me, say, that is a lie, because life can give you what you want. You don't want. Right. So he was keep telling me that I say just wait. Me, I will marry somebody that I need. I don't want any. Uh, so everybody was coming to me. I was telling them that I don't need you. So I was mm. dreaming my own dream. But God surprised me. So <laughs> when my my father God, didn't have God, no, God enough God surprised money, you, right? Yeah, God surprised right. me. Uh, yes. Even God. in the church, I was so proud. 
the, mm. the, the, the border cannot come near me because I was looking at them like mm. there's no, nothing. <laughs> so, uh. when everything finished, finished everything, I don't know what happened, I married Papa Teddy. <laughs> so, my father was reminding me that your See husband that. is a tailor. Uh. He makes clothes, yeah? Uh. So now I remember, I was like, God forgive me. Mm. Because God has his own ways. Yeah. Own ways. So yeah. I want to talk to the ladies, yes. especially the ladies. The four ways pastors say is a key for us to go to God. Because if you don't follow the, because when I marry, God shows to Papa Teddy, but he didn't show to me. Mm -hmm. But because God is God, mm -hmm. he confused me. I don't know how I accept him. I don't know. know. I can yeah. tell you how we marry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Why, so I can tell you that <laughs> it was not my feeling. It was not even in my, my wedding. You will see that I was not happy. Mm -hmm. So you're not there, right? I was not there. Yeah. Yeah. The kind of things I wanted, it was not, I was expected. I but trust me, God surprised me. Hallelujah. When I was living with this man, and the people where I was thinking that they're going to take care of me, when I look at their marriage, I thank God for my life. Yes. Amen. I thank God for my life. Mm. Because the man I was thinking that he's going to marry me, he married my friends from the same school. The way he was treating that girl, I was like, Jesus, thank you, God. <laughs> because I could die. I can't take all he was doing to that lady. I can't take it. Yes. So I was like, Jesus, thank mm. Thank you because you don't follow my desire, yes. but you did your, your will, so I thank you. So be careful. Mm. Don't yeah. judge people. If you don't like somebody, don't, don't even say anything. Just tell him that, let, let's pray. But don't tell the person that you are not the right person because you'll be surprised. Because somebody can venge for what you say in your mouth. Mm. He can marry you for the, the revenge. revenge. And then when you go home, you start it's suffering. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Maybe speak with somebody elder than you. Tell him that, look at what I'm feeling. Maybe they can direct you. But don't go to men and say, no. Not this one. Not this one. Mm. Pray to God. Be prayerful. I, I love God when I, was, when I was young. I was giving myself to God. That's why God, even I didn't choose, even I, I was not having feeling, but God directed me to the good way yeah. because I was fearing God. I give myself to him. And God said that, no, I'm not going to follow what he's doing, but I'm going to give him what I want. Amen. So be prayerful, fear God, live in the God ways, and the God will clear your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. So who was the next? Okay. Yeah, brother, then, then the pastor will take off. Um. Okay, I heard the fourth. Uh, uh, can you put a microphone close so we can get you? In? Uh, I heard the fourth way you say about vision, strong desire for God, and a passion, prophetic message, divine connection. All right. What about if you have a self conviction? But according to how you want to live your life, mm. like you said, this is what, it's not like a material stuff, mm. but your own, uh, you know, because you know yourself more than anyone. You know, I want this, I want this, I want this. Mm. So what about if you have that, but you don't have any four of them? Um, what I can say, the only thing is just to be very careful. Uh, uh, what we're talking about, the four ways God speaks to you or God will show you. But remember, we also said we all have our own personal desires that may not be godly desires. So your, yours, I can throw it on the second part with a strong godly desire and passion, it could also be turned into self-conviction if you're a godly person. That's one thing. Because most of the time when we are just anyhow, because our main thing was God will direct the steps of his children. 
But if, if you want to do things your own way, you don't care about God, you don't care about what God says, I don't want to hear from the Lord, it's okay still, you can do your marriage and remarry again. And that's where you find people marrying today, after three months, they feel like, no, I was wrong in my decision. I want to leave this person and I marry the second person or the third and so on. And people found themselves in four, five marriages. Because of what? They are not convinced. Or maybe they were convinced of something and they feel like, no, it's not now again. Uh, the conviction have changed and are moving to something else. But when God gives you something, God will give you the ability to handle it. All together? When God gives you something, God will give you the ability to handle that person. If you see us staying in marriages for a very long time, Remember I said it, there's no marriage is perfect. It doesn't mean we are perfect. It doesn't mean there's perfection in marriages. That's why I said from the beginning, there's no marriage that is perfect. Hallelujah. Why? Because every marriage has issues. Everyone. It doesn't matter whether it's a bishop, a pastor, is a pastor, whatever title you might look at from outside, every marriage has its own issues. But those, marriage, those issues, they are handled by God himself. God will give you the wisdom to handle marriage in order for it to work. That's why you'll be surprised to see a person that's been married for 20 years and you feel like yours, maybe you just came in one year, it's not working. You feel like, ah, did you make it 20 years and mine is one year only, it's not working. Hallelujah. It's because maybe you never ask God or you never ask the Lord to direct you in that marriage. So I think that's, that's the only one way. Are you getting that? Another one, okay. You're welcome. Uh, when, when I'm talking like a self conviction, okay, I'm not talking about your your self design. Okay, you, I'm talking about according to the Bible. Say, like a, you didn't see no vision, you didn't see no uh, no strong design, mm. you didn't see no divine connection, but you read the, what the Bible told you, and you trying to live with that, make a choice according. In the Bible. Okay, you make a choice according to the Bible? Yeah. Um, there are people as well who make, who make, you know, like, I can talk about Solomon. He had also self convictions He made choices, maybe according, but I think it, it, it could be according to the Bible, but it was not according to the word of God. Because he was told never to marry foreign women and all those. But he went ahead and knew that. Do you see that? That's a little bit different. So when you do something that you know it is not from God and it's not it's forbidden from the Lord, you do it because you feel I'm convinced. So then you know you are out of the will of God. So you must take you must be ready for the consequences. That's why you know someone like Solomon, God gave him greatest wisdom and all that. He was a servant of God, you know. God God said to his father, "Come build my, my my temple," but he gave Solomon responsibility to build the temple. But yet the only one thing God taught uh, Solomon was never to marry foreigner woman that but he went ahead and married for a woman so what happened he was maybe convinced in one way or another this is a woman i want this is my woman material one and all that sometimes we, we also go through that i've seen people come in america here and they tell you ah, i can't marry this, those those were from women from outside i want to marry americans i want to marry from whatever and all that is that is a self-conviction they are convinced in that and you can't just change their mind satisfied thank you uh, who else? Mama? Okay. Uh, uh, brother, yeah, then Mama will speak last. Yes, I have a question, Pastor. You're welcome. Um, the question I have is, um, you have godly, godly strong desire, mm -hmm. and you made that person, and it started from appearance satisfaction, and you have that godly strong desire, and now that godly strong desire is mixed with lust. How can that relationship continue? Is it something that God can... Uh, direct. Okay, that's a very good question, right? He said you have a strongly godly desire and passion. Now, along the way, so what happens? Last starts coming. Are you that? And one thing you need to remember that as a child of God, last is not from God. That's one thing. And then every time you know that your relationship is now started mixing up with something else. Are you that? It's just same question as you asked me. Can God tell this person to marry this one and withdraw from it? The answer would be yes. If you allow the enemy, the devil to enter into your relationship, God can withdraw that relationship. Just like the same way God placed Saul to be a king 
Are we there? And then God rejected him. Why? Because he did what was not according to the will of God. When God, for example, the Bible says you should not uh, have maybe sexual uh, intercourse before marriage. And now because you're full of lust, you know that? So I want to test before I got married. So you know some of those things people say to young people. So I want to test before I got married to know whether the test is good or not so that I can change or something. So this is where the devil comes in. Now when the enemy comes in, so what happens? So he want to destroy what God has started building. And when you allow the enemy to come into a relationship, so then remember that God is not in again. God can change his mind on you. God can establish you a king, but if you don't do what is according to his will, so God can still change his mind on you. Just like as I said, King, king, king Saul was appointed by God. He was, was anointed by God to be the king over Israel, right? But then what happened to Saul? He did what was not present in the eyes of God. God decided to take him out of kingship and he said, I'll place David over there. So when you have a woman, a man, that even when you believe that this is what God is giving me, but you don't follow the word of God, you're trying to do things your own way, God can withdraw himself from that approval. Is that clear? God bless you. So, Pastor, speak here, then Mama will speak here. When I saw I have like four questions. Um, the first one, Pastor, I, I'm a lady, mm -hmm. and then I have this uh, godly, strong passion, mm -hmm. whatever. And then we went into our relationship, um, but tunafika wakati tunafaa mariage okay tuko mdoa bwana yangu atumiki so how can i handle that okay so you come into after marriage you find that husband is not working right mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh you you talking about work functional okay yani machine oh okay uh, engine engine ya itumiki vizuri the oh, engine is not working. Sexual intercourse. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, ile, ile so, ya, ya honeymoon. Yes. Ya honeymoon. Honeymoon. Mm. And then nothing. Yes. Me, alikuwa na strong and mm. the passion mm. ya mungu. Yes. Sasa, that person, how nishauri gani tunaza mga nipatia mie yes. na jikuta mule situasyo. Jo, nikimbie au nibakie. Thank you. That's a good question, right? Yeah. You marry someone and you really, okay, just say in short, you really believe this is from God. God has given, God has spoken into this relationship and then suddenly you come into uh, now time where you have to come into sexual intercourse and you find that uh, maybe the man is not functioning, right? Mm. He's not operating. So what do you do? Do you run away or what do you do? So uh, there are two things I will speak about there. So number one is that, uh, this is what I always give advice to every new uh, couples and people want to get into a relationship. Number one is that, speak the truth to one another. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If you know there is any problem you have, don't reveal it after marriage. Reveal it before marriage. So, because marriage should not be built based on lies, but it must be a truth. Just like I accept you just as you are and we trust God together that God can improve what is going on right now. All together. That's the number one thing. So if someone comes into that relationship and you find that this is a situation, so we believe God can do miracles. We, we have seen, we have, we've had miracles, this kind of miracles God operated and people had some of those issues. Are we there? We have seen that. We have seen people marrying someone because this person had been 20 years married and maybe even never had children. And suddenly someone decides, no, I'm, I'm leaving you, I'm marrying someone else. And then someone is convinced that if I marry you, you have children. And they marry you and then you get children. Why? Because they believe and they trust with you. They know the truth. They know what is going on and they accept that and then they take it and God comes in. So, number two way I will tell you is that don't be in a hurry. Because it's a commitment of life you have made but the mistakes were made right from the beginning. So the mistakes were made right from the beginning because there was no truth first in the relationship. So now the only problem that you have, you need to come to a point where you can trust God each other. 
and give it some time because God can work out things. That's what I believe, a children of God. It's not only that. People have so many issues that are more even than that. But that is the most things that we said last time. Remember, we talked about it. It's the most problems that we have in most marriages because few people will tell you that. I'm about to talk to someone. Few people will tell you that this is the problem they have in their home. But they will, because they don't want to say it, they will try to create other things around. But yet, the problem is more the bed, sexual thing in the bed. So, give it some time because it's a marriage. You can't marry today and divorce tomorrow. Or you can't just go into marriage this morning and then because maybe you find the man is not functioning and then the Sunday morning, you know, you, you decide to go. So, what image are you telling people? What are you showing to the people and all that? Take some time and believe in God that God can bring a change. But then, so in, in, that, in that way, what I'm talking about, so when there was no truth inside the marriage, that's where the consequences may come in. Because if somebody was not able to open up and speak the truth, and then you go through a situation where you cannot, uh, you cannot continue this way, so it's up to you now to decide, to come together and make up a decision. If you feel like you cannot continue, we have waited upon the Lord, we have waited upon God all this time, and the first thing, you lied to me because you never told me the truth, and I feel like I cannot continue this marriage, is your decision now. But you have to talk about it. Is that clear? Yeah, you have to talk about it. Then you can decide whether you are leaving or continuing. Okay, another question? Um, okay, Pastor, I have, uh, I, I got a, a, a vision. Yes. And uh, I a part of a prophetic word. Okay. You got a vision and a prophetic word. Uh-huh. Okay. And a strong. And you feel the strong uh-huh. desire, a godly desire and yes. passion in your heart. But I'm a lady. You're a lady, yes. <sighs> but I have that, that connection to that boy, that man. Mm. If I go and I put that man and say, man, mm. I love you. Mm. Is it wrong? According to God, according mm. to the Bible, as Christians, mm. I'm, uh, as a lady, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Is it taboo or is it not taboo? Okay. Um, on that one, I cannot uh, really tell you because the problem first is that we come from different uh, cultures and different traditions. So the tradition, there, there are some traditions where it's very easy for a woman to just tell a man and marry you. you, you should cut the thing. But some, some kind of other traditions or cultures, it is very difficult. Are we there? So what I can say, it may not be openly said, but you can find a way to create a relationship. And through that relationship, because every, pe- if every person you see marrying today, just like you heard the testimony of Sister Rebecca, so every testimony you hear from people who are married today, okay, it started from somewhere, and it started, something started to grow. Like she said, she, she didn't want to marry somebody who does not have a master degree. She didn't want to marry something. But, but when the relationship came, I don't know, she didn't tell us more how it started, but it started somewhere, somehow. And through that, it started to grow. By growing, today they are husband and wife, and with so many big children that you can see. So there's no relationship. That's why, for me, what I used to, I used to interpret love, I always say, uh, I don't know what word should I use, but I always say love, love is not something that is always there. But love is something that comes and it starts to grow. Because every person you see who marry who and who today, many of them will tell you, I've never really loved this person in the beginning. Most of them. Not all, but most of them will tell you. I've never married. Even when he came to propose to me, I was like, sis, no, 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 no. You said so it means love was not there. Love is not something that is just automatic, it's just there. No. It, it comes and it starts to grow. The same person you refused, you would never marry, you end up marrying the person. That's what it means love was not there. Because if the love was just there, he would just, just come and you just uh, grab him and then you keep on the journey. That's why we gave the example of the sister who refused this guy, called him a dog, but today he's the husband. You see that love was not there. But love came and love started to grow. And up to date, they are together. How many years now? They married before we came to America. So now seven years they sit together. So it means they are more than seven years together. Mm. Don't get tired of me, okay? Did you get that? Is that clear? 
Okay, the last one is, uh, I think it's not a question, but I, I just want to give an experience mm. what I went through. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, because sometimes like session like this, you want to give experience. Um, I'm not giving somebody experience, but I'll give you my, the original one right now. Mm. Okay, this is what happened when I was, when I meet my, uh, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> When I, I meet my nana, na? mm. so um, I was coming from my country, 2004, and I passed through Zambia and I went to Zimbabwe. Now, in 2006, my brother, uh, who lives in Europe, he came to get married uh, in Zambia, and then I was called to come to attend the wedding. To attend the wedding. Mm. So now is where I meet my my nana. Na. But in this way. So when I reached there, uh, I request to, to sing a song. You requested to sing a song in a the song church? song the church. Okay. And then I did a practice with a guy over there. And then on, that, on Sunday, mm. I appeared on the, uh, the platform. On the platform and Niliimba Kabisa. Kokweli Mungu Kachitukuza. Uwezo wa Mungu ikafanya kazi siku ile. Siwezi kusahau ile siku. Hata moderator it was difficult for him to to turn around because the power of God was so strong. But my nana na where kule when you know what? I say man, yes, this is the man. She felt something. Yeah, she felt something. She felt something. I say mm. this kind of man I'm looking for. Mimi mm. siko hata kule ni kwa mvyango ningekuwa ku marriage ni rudia wapi? Ngoje Zimbabwe. And then, uh, from there, uh, mom, uh, it's not that we have to say 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 that we have to how did you manage to, to, to bring some, uh, to call the word? And then I started showing her, you know, uh, showing how to read the Bible, how to understand, how we can prepare to be a moderator, to do moderation in the church, in the choir. So I started from there. And then from there, you know? So what happened? So, yeah, I'm going Nambegu. Inside here. Inside here. So Nikanda Zimbabwe, 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 Nikarudia Zambia. On that day, Uku Zimbabwe, Uku. Mm. Nilikuwa Nyanguka Mapendo Uku. I see. Namgeni Dada Uku. Mm. Me, alikuwa kuna safari ya kuenda Australia. Mm. Uku Australia. Kule, Hakuna kitu. Wow. Mm. <laughs> so, this is what happened. The real love. I need somebody. But the lady, she was not yet ready. She would think about going first to, have, to Australia, and then we can do other things after. I say, I'm not like that. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, is the really story. And then, uh, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, Nisha tosha kabisa. Sina akili angwa yikote na kuli. Lakini kusabu nilikuwa dirija wa kwa ya. Sa ikakuwa vigumu ni kanza wakupa. Baka sayi watasema. Ah, babi ya na kivu. Bana ingega mambo. Bana, bana ribish. Mm. Ni kanza omba mungu. Ni kasema mungu. Ukreye. Si kikitu kimoe. Kita separi mieno yu mwanamuki. Mm. Yesi. Mieni kwa naomba vile. Kutoka profetese. Kutoka zambi. Haka kukia pali. Kamtonga prophecy, akamambi unaona. Kukiana mwekuna sumbua sumbua, 
ule kiana alikuwa maana kwako lakini vile umpendi kumkuolewa naye utaolewa na mwingine kiana lakini ule kiana angekufa mm. so you are talking about me sasa watu wakia kunipatia profesia yule alimpatia maombi ule dada mimi sikuwa ile sio kumaombi mm. bana nipatie nikasema okay Mungu anamwambia na huyu dada anaombaga sana nitajua kama Mungu amejibu yangu au hakujibu but that lady siku ya kwenda Australia alikuwa kuniona akaniambia oh dirija unaona mimi naanza enda uh, so uh, mimi niko naenda tutatengeneza vitu vitakuwa tubi nikamwambia dada wewe uenda uyafika kule uko naenda uende kwanza usimpatie promise akaenda Australia apresi moi akanita ase dirija mimi naona sema hauta nivumilia 5 years ifo ni some nifanye ah nikasema dada hakuna problem edare kwanza mimi nilikuwa maombi yangu nikasema roho Mungu asante umejibu mm. so sasa nenda zambi nafika zambi ile demi demi dus nakutana na na nafika nikamwambia mkubwa level dizo nikamwambia pasa niko na kuya mimi niko na kuya kujua na 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 mimi usimwambie dimanche mkanisa sije tu nakutana nao kanisa fika dimanche kumbe wewe na 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 huku yeye ashaka kunitoka muroho zamani sasa mimi nafika zambi naambia mkubwa usimwambie kitu tunaenda ku dimanche dimanche ananona mkanisa kisi mimi nazoea kisi nilikuwa pale na nana alikuwa kama service na Aisha eh tutaongea ongea unaona vya kuongea sasa ile siku na nana nikimbia nana sema nikamuita nana kuya akafa sambla nasema ah dada naniweza kwa hiyo anapiga sambla me mbona nana alikama kama wanaume nikasema wewe ujeheshimie unaona niko na kuita ifu kuti <laughs> kuti obedience ah uh, obeisance so wakati ni muita na nata na kafa sambla okay na mimi nikaikala mgari mbo nikaanza ongea na wengine ba badada pale wengine ba kaka tunaongea ongea oh ulikuya eh hey, ulikuya hey, masiku mingi masiku mingi okay ah uh, kisha akakuya kumwisho sali kuya nikamwambia nana mimi ni kuita na katala kuya vrema niko na problem na wewe oh hakuna problem nikamkumbusha nilikuwa siku moja mkubwa wangu alendaga zambi nikamwambia mwambie na nana nitumie ndagala nilikuwa niko mkambi mwambie na nana anitumie ndagala kapenta but nana aliandika barua akasema aseme hakuna kapenta nitakutumia you see nikamkumbusha we nikwambia nitumie kapenta kwa katala sasa hapa niko zambi hapa hivi nikirudia utanipatia nini akasema ujeshimie sitakupatia kitu so to make the story short this what happened nikaenda kunyumba usiku nikamata simu nikamwambia nana unajua eh na nataka kesho ukuye hapa kwa nyumba taongea na wewe wa wenyewe ile siku akakuya nikamwambia unajua eh hapa tunatongozana kikubwa hakuna ya watoto jeshi nimwambia tunatongozana kikubwa ewa ni mimi niko hapa mimi na kia kutafuta wewe ngonda za ngonda Zimbabwe ifu nirudie na wewe na na bwana na mungu na kisimu na kuaga akasula nikamwambia mimi sitakubembeleza hakuna oh you know you are like this or no hakuna tena sile kupoteza muda deja hapo restoration yangu inaanza kuivi niliambia mungu sipendi kwenda ulblaya bila mwanamke okay Sabisha za hivi huko namwambia na nana unajua hii kukupenda ni kupenda mama Sina bezo useme no Hapa wewe ufu useme tu we Alafu nana kanambia oh na, uh, nitaenda nitakupatia jiu nikasema wewe uende jiu yangu nishajua iko we Niko na atandre we hapana no You know what Alienda siku ya kwanza kunijivia siku ya pili ya kunijivia nikam niko na chungu nakamwambia nana nitumie nite akatuma nite nikasema yes anaitika 
You see? And then ile kupendana mwile mwile miezi mbili. Kana miezi tatu. Haikuwa ya kukawia. Ah initaka tuma. Ah pole pole. Akaanza regea, akaanza regea. Hai. Na kisi mimi na hizi mbao. Lakini yeye balikuwa alipata message. Sorry to make uh, alipata message Mungu alikuwa na mgeni kiana pala alikuwa na pesa mwenye alikuwa anapendana naye sasa mimi nilifika. Huyo kiana alikuwa na shop bali anaye zambi zambi kama uko na shop you are good. Isn't it? Alikuwa na shop alikuwa sawa ile kiana. Mie natoka mkambi ona maisha mkambi na gonda. Mnaona kesi mnaona hizi nyama zikuwa kwa hizi mko mnaona. But Mungu alimwambia seme Alikuwa yuko maombi yuko naomba naye Mungu anamwambia aseme no bwana yako ni mfuliru mrefu mwekunda Bwana bacha maditos na sasa nifika kumbe na mimi nifika muta ya mzuri so in short tulifanya vitu vyote ale nikaenda Zimbabwe na naka kwa Zimbabwe na naka kufika tu Zimbabwe hivi wana Twitter installation ale kapanda naye. So ni, nitaka ku summarize kwa ndoto prophetic word na a strong belief. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wow, wonderful. So mama will finish and then Okay, this is mama to say then. Hallelujah. Because time time is gone. Uh. And... Sometimes it's like you have a lot of things to say, but uh, I'm going just to summarize it. Um, one thing that you need to remember as you are busy searching for a wife or a lady waiting for a husband to come, uh, don't take marriage as a privilege. Take it as a responsibility. Take it as a assignment that you are given by God. That is, you have to change your mind first uh, on what you are busy thinking. Because when you go with your own emotions, uh, with you want a tall man, uh, you want somebody who has muscles, you want somebody who's rich, you want somebody who knows how to dress very well, God can change things around you. That is one thing that is there. You want somebody that is rich, special to the ladies. Uh, I've been in your time where I have my own things. That I want a man like this, I want a man like that. I did not want to marry a teacher. I did not want to marry a a soldier, I did not want to marry a policeman, I did not want to marry a pastor. So all were qualification that I put down, that all these kind of people, when they come my way, I will just throw away. Uh, I came from Burundi, I think you heard all the stories. When I meet him, he did not even come and speak a lot of words. He just said, I want to marry you. When he said that, I said, go and come back after three days. Those three days, I went through fasting. I was crying before God. I said, God, why do you bring your servant? I start asking inquiries to people to see if they will say something bad so that I can build up my strong thing to say that, no, this is not qualified. But everyone that I was asking, they were giving me a good testimony. And they were like, are you dreaming? Did he really he came to you? And I was like, why you think that you know, he did not come to me? But the other thing also, don't look the riches that the man has. Don't look who, which title that that man has built. You will build those things together. You can, really God can put his hand on you guys and you are going to go far. You heard on Sunday, we were eating just a bread on the street. We sit together on the street, we eat a bread. We didn't know that today we are going to be here. Amen? So for every lady that is here, 
please be careful and be very, very careful. Do not throw a man away because of what you have already built for yourself. The other part also is a part of the family that God has given to me. A woman is the one that convinced the family. I did convince my sister. We're supposed to go together to, to South Africa. I did talk to her. She was so angry. I thought she's not going to talk to me all her life. And she was the only point. So she went and talked to my family and everyone. But if you as a woman, you have your stand. As a woman, you know that you are convinced this is my husband. This is the man that God has given me. Then you don't need to fear anything. The second thing, keep yourself pure. No matter the love that the man is showing you, do not be so weak before the man. When you start sleeping with that man, even if you are in the church, tomorrow you get married, he will insult you. He will tell you, my friend, I start sleeping with you before even marriage. So how may I not sure that you're not sleeping with other people? But keep yourself pure. If you see that lust is taking over, get married. You love each other, right? Ask for the blessing and get married. And the that is going to be really the center. When you make God to put the center, God to be involved in everything that you are doing. Uh, for the young men that are here, you are looking for a lady to marry. <laughs> there is a lot of things that are happening these days. I think we already learned about four things. Conviction, the, the prophecy, and everything. It's not about the makeup. It's not about how a lady knows how to dress herself. Hmm? Right? <laughs> it's not how really a lady knows how to move her body very well when she passes near you. No. It's about the character. It's about who she is. Is this lady, when I put her in my house, she's going to raise my children? She's going to build my house? Really, is people going to visit my house and say, I have gone to the house of so-and-so? Because when you have a lady that knows her responsibility, who she is, her integrity, then you have made it well. Makeup. If you want to go on YouTube, look, people who are applying makeup. When they take up makeup, even as women ourselves, it's, it's so surprising. There are a lot of fake things on women. A lot of... Sorry, ladies, don't finish me because I said this. There are a lot of things that are fake on women. Hairs or the things that they put on the eyes, the, the clothes, everything. Even, they can even promise you this and do this and do this. But then the reality of the matter, you will put your hand on the head. Amen. So please be very, very vigilant. And when you get a lady who fear God, a woman or a man who fear God, do not let them go. Do not let them go. You need really to go on your knees and say, God. and lady, when a man come and propose to you, stop being too stubborn. He comes the first day. You are stubborn. You reject him. He come another day. You reject him. He come another day. He reje you reject him. Ah, men can change their hearts just within a second. Within a second and look somewhere else. So that is all what I want to say. I know we still have more time again for this same seminar and everything. We are not going to finish everything today. Go and build up your questions. Go and really... Ask God more, what, what do I need? It's not about money. What if a woman loves you because of what you can give her? <laughs> My friend, when you put her in the house and you don't give her what you're giving her, just know that you're in big mess. Thank you. Ah, that is one thing. If a woman does not, it's not just to respect the in-laws. A woman does not know how to respect people around her. And you are going, you are saying, no, I'm going to change her. You are lying to yourself. 
You are not going to change her. Or when she's already in your house, marriage, what you go through as love is not what is there inside the marriage, let me tell you. In my country, they say that the tongue that come to propose you is not 